Hello, welcome to another in our Lenten series of the colors of the rainbow. Looking to the rainbow where diversity brings pleasure, brings joy, brings hope, brings promise. Today we're looking at green and blue colors together on the primary and secondary color wheel told you last week that when we looked at red and orange and yellow, not very many places are those colors actually listed. There are more. There are more for green and blue in the Bible. But first I want to talk about what green means, what it does to us, where it, where it comes into us. Um, green is restful to the eye. Studies show that a green environment can reduce fatigue. It's restful, it's calm. Um, verdigris is um, a green color that was used in um, ancient times. Pliny wrote about it. Verdigris is made by placing a plate or blade of copper or brass or bronze, slightly warmed into a vat of fermenting wine. I don't think that's what happened to Copper Top, but it's sort of the same principle. You leave it there for several weeks and then you scrape off and dry the green powder that forms on the metal. Um, it was used by the Romans in murals of Pompeii and in the cultic medieval manuscripts as early as the fifth century in this common era. It produced a blue-green color which no other pigment could imitate. Blue-green, we've got both of those going on today. But it has drawbacks. It's unstable. It could not resist dampness, and it didn't mix well with other colors. It could ruin other colors with which it came into contact, and it was toxic. Leonardo da Vinci, in his treatise on painting, warned artists, do not use it. Too fragile. Um, animals and plants in for green, it is a kind of a camouflage. We can hide behind in camouflage clothing. Animals, um, the ones who do best at camouflage can, can turn themselves green to look like the leaves or the ground or, or in the shadows. The Egyptian hieroglyph for green represented a growing papyrus sprout, new life, new growth. There's a close connection then between green and vegetation and vigor and growth. In wall paintings, the ruler of the underworld, Osiris, is typically portrayed with a green face. And so if you see Wicked and you know the Wicked Witch of the West is green, an evil face, something to watch out for. Tombs often contain small little green amulets in the shape of a scarab beetles made out of malachite, which would protect them and give vigor to the deceased. And it symbolized the sea, which was called the very green. Different water than we have here in the Great Lakes where it's often described as root beer in, in the browns and the metals from around here. However, the Romans thought it was a highly prized color. It was the color of Venus, the goddess of gardens and vegetables and vineyards. In the Middle Ages and the Renaissance time, the color of clothing showed a person's rank and profession. Red could only be worn by nobility, brown and gray by the peasants, and green by merchants and bankers, the gentry and their families, um, which leads us to money, green money in many countries. The Mona Lisa wears green in her portrait. Green does tell us about nature and vivacity and life and springtime and freshness. And, and if you've got a green thumb, that means you possess a lot of those qualities and are able to produce them. It also represents youth, perhaps inexperience. Um, someone who's green, like a greenhorn, doesn't know everything yet, hasn't matured into, think of vegetables, hasn't matured into its proper ripe color yet. You may be green around the gills, meaning either you're like a greenhorn or um, your skin's a little green from being 
seasick. It's calm. I mentioned that many fast food restaurants are red to keep you energized, to keep you moving, but other restaurants use green or muted greens to keep you calm and to have you stay and enjoy another glass of beverage. Green is a sign of tolerableness and agreeableness or jealousy, the green eyed monster of jealousy. It can mean poison. Uh, if you got a Mr. Yuck sticker, sickness, you may feel green. You may look green to those who are observing you. On the other hand, Greenpeace and the Green Party talk about ecology and, and the planet and how we are to take care of it. In the Bible, there are several references, not too many to mention. Genesis talks about in creating the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve are placed, that God has given them all green herbs to eat. Anything that they want is beautiful, is fresh, is alive. On the other hand, Deuteronomy 12, when God is angry with the world and speaking with Moses, God says, I will destroy everything under every green tree. In other words, all things, everything, myriads of things, plenty of things, the whole lot of things God is going to destroy because of people's unfaithfulness. And when you think about it, not in Duluth in the winter, but in other times of the year, green is everywhere. Samson and Delilah are a couple that we read about in our Bible stories too. Samson, the strong man. Delilah tried to steal his strength by tying him with seven green bowstrings that had not yet dried out. I don't know what the magic is in that or the power is in that, but her system failed. Psalm 37 says that the wicked will wither like a green herb, like the ones that God was going to destroy in Deuteronomy. Psalm 52, though, describes the person as, I am like a green olive tree, productive, and I will live a long life. And if you have read, you know that some of the olive trees in the Middle East are hundreds and hundreds and perhaps thousands of years old. That is a good long life. And from the New Testament, think of the feeding of the 5,000. The people are seated on the hillside and there are people who have traveled from afar. Jesus needs to feed them. The disciples say that's impossible, but Jesus says, tell them to sit down. And so they all sit down in hundreds or fifties upon the green grass of the hillside and prepare to be amazed. Green is calm, green is life, or green is poison, as most of our symbols are one or the other, or one and the other. So moving to blue, next to that on the color wheels, think about porcelain, fine china, fine porcelain. The, the willow design comes into my mind the oceans, which also can be green or blue, the sky, green or blue, depending on good weather or impending bad weather, lakes reflecting what is around them, mountains in the distance often appear to be blue, blueberries, morning glories, blue jeans, a lot of uniforms are blue. Um, it's, it's another calming but peaceful color as well. Business suits often are blue, navy blue suits or black. And because blue is commonly associated with harmony, it was chosen as the color of the flags of the United Nations and of the European Union. And studies find that people look to blue as um, being connected with harmony, with faithfulness, with confidence, with distance, with infinity. 
blue is the imagination. It is cold. Occasionally, it is with sadness. We often think of someone feeling blue, feeling, feeling down. Um, lots of popular music, country songs talk about um, blue being a sad time. There's a whole genre of music called the blues where people wail about what has been going on in their life and they are not happy. And blue is also chosen by half the men and women in the studies as their favorite color. And I can attest to that as being my true, my true color too. But it's also the color most associated with the masculine, just ahead of black. And it is the color most associated with intelligence and knowledge, and calm and concentration. States which voted Democratic in four consecutive presidential elections are called blue states. I was just learning this when I studied for today. Those which were voted for Republicans are termed red states. States which voted for different parties in two of the last four presidential elections are called swing states and are usually colored purple, a mix of red and blue, or sometimes pink or light blue. So it's gotta be consistent voting for that to happen and that, that fits with the blue being comforting. In art, it was even declared by a Pope that every time the Virgin Mary is presented, she needs to be wearing blue clothing. In the Bible, there are 15 chapters in the book of Exodus with explicit instructions that God sets down through Moses the requirements in building the sanctuary where God will dwell with the people. There are gemstones and rare woods and precious metals and spices and oils and fabrics of reds and blues and purples adorn the walls and adorn the priest. Blue is predominant among those colors, again, for the calm, for the peacefulness. Esther, Queen Esther, interesting story. If you haven't read that, just read it through. It's, it's such an interesting story of vulnerability and power and greed. But the banquet hall where she, um, where she was introduced and then where she um, has visitors come and they have conversations are decorated with blue cloth hangings again. And Mordecai, Mordecai the bad guy, is clothed in royal robes of blue and white linen. Maybe because he was defeated, that is why the Jewish um, symbol, the blue cross of, or star of David on a white background, brings joys to the people of Hebrew ancestry. In Ezekiel, blue clothing is worn by non-godly people who pretend or who have a false authority, who try to make their way into leadership among the people, but who are false. And perhaps that blue lets us see through them if they do not embody the calmness and the agreeability that blue renders us to think about, then perhaps we can tell that they are not true blue. There is one passage in particular that um, reminds us and I think perhaps embodies or, or brings to us the images of calm and life and vision and vivacity that the green and blue do together. And that is the 23rd Psalm. I imagine lying down in green pastures and still waters that those are blue and the sky above is blue and the waters are blue. And this is a very peaceful, calm, gentle time. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. 
Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Blue and green are among the myriad of colors in the rainbow, and we ought to look to the rainbow for God's presence, for God's constancy with us, for God's promises to never again destroy the earth, for God's inclusion and affirmation of diversity in all. Amen.